love to be ready for him. It's Mark Marin, the uh, are you the number one podcaster in America? I think you are, Mark. I don't know, you know, in some people's point of view, uh, yeah, I do all right. People see, like, I think maybe today I am, Bob. Maybe <laughs> today you are. <laughs> for today. Maybe today, if we, if we go to iTunes Comedy Podcast, maybe today, uh, as far as the public is concerned, I am the number one comedy podcast. I'm going to go look right now. Right. What's going on, fellas? Put the phone down, go look. We'll go see look, yeah. <laughs> We've got all kinds of time. We've got three minutes. No, I, I, look, I know you're, I know it's a tight schedule. I know I screwed up. I, I, look at that. I'm number one today on comedy. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Hey, uh, Mark, but, for, uh, but first I, of all. I'm sorry I'm late. I was, I, I'm sorry I'm late because I was, I, I was expecting your call, but uh, uh, my phone wasn't. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I didn't have the phone on. I was in here. I'm researching a, a big guest I have to interview today. Who, who are you interviewing today? Oh, do I got to tell you? Um, I'm going over to uh, Bob Newhart's house. Wow. Uh, in, a, in about an hour, and, you know, hopefully it'll go well. I don't like to usually say that, that who I'm interviewing before I do it. All right. Well, we will. Uh, hell knows what could happen. This is local radio. No one will ever know. Hey, hey, uh, let me say something, Mark, because uh, we don't, we actually do have limited time, which is ironic because the thing I love about your podcasts is that you don't have the limits of regular radio. That you, I will look at a podcast and I will say, wow, he's going to talk to Lewis Black for an hour and 20 minutes. And it'll sometimes take me yeah. a couple of days driving around in the car to hear the whole interview. And, and, and one of the other things you do that, like, it's so, it's so amazing is you don't do the typical radio interview. Like, at first that bothered me because I'm a radio guy. But I, I listened to your conversations, and now I get why it's so amazing and why they gave you a TV show. And by the way, we'll get to the TV show. Because uh, I am going to stroke you pretty good now, and I hope you'll come back and talk for longer than three freaking minutes next time. But anyway, there uh, won't be a I'll next call time. You tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but anyway, uh, what you do with your conversations is they happen more organically and more naturally than almost all other media conversations. And I, I, I was inspired by that, and I wondered if you're doing that on purpose. But also, the other thing about you is. You're very honest about your own shortcomings, which works very well. And that you, you know, you've not always been thought of yourself as this incredibly successful guy, right? Right. Well, look, you know, the medium, like I can only do it the way I do it. You know, I didn't spend enough time in radio to develop, you know, radio habits. The radio guy once said to somebody else about podcasting, "These guys don't know what they're doing. They don't even reset the guest." Right. Uh, yeah. There's no reason to. So the. The, the thing that happened with me is that I'm doing exactly what I'm comfortable doing. I don't really pay much attention to it. There was not a plan. I didn't plan to do it different than other media. I just followed my heart and just engaged the way I engaged as honestly as possible because I was afforded that freedom with this medium. And, you know, I have complete control over it, so no one can tell me differently. There was nothing hanging in the balance. There were no advertisers to disappoint the general managers to, to, uh, to school me on what needed to be done. Right. So I, you know, I was able through podcasting, through these microphones, to be the most, you know, genuine I could be and the most true to myself I could be, and that's always been a concern of mine in any of my creativity or my output right. was this journey to be as true to myself as possible. And obviously, you know, we all lie to ourselves a little bit, and but I try to call myself out on that. And when I'm with guests, I just try. All I'm looking for is to have some sort of emotional uh, engagement with them, uh, an authentic. Uh, conversational engagement with them. I don't know that they really know that, but, uh, you know, I need a lot for my guests. That well, was pretty amazing. And, and a lot of your guests, by the way, and it started out, I'm sure you just got your best friends, great comics and people you knew, but now a lot of your guests are, like, honored to sit down with you uh, and enjoy it. And, and, and uh, now, oh, by the way, uh, is everything good with Moon still? Are you going out with Moon? No. That no, fell that apart? A while back. Oh. Uh, that ended a while back. You know, I, I had high hopes. And, you know, you know, fortunately, it didn't get too too messy or too ugly. I just I just couldn't handle the situation. You know, I, all right. Well, we got to talk. We don't have time to get. Mind. We're on the radio, so we don't have time to get into that. I do want to say this: um, your IFC television show, Marin, first season, binge watched it, loved it, did a, did it on a long flight, several long flights. The second season, you your episode with uh, Ray Romano. Yeah, that's the that's amazing television. Oh, thanks, Bob. 
He hasn't yeah, gotten to the radio episode yet, Mark. Yeah. Clearly. Uh, no, I haven't. I've only I I'm two or three into it. In late. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. You're gonna like. Okay. It. So, uh, Mark, um, is this the worst microphone you have in your collection? Because this is, uh, it, it's not a very intimate sound. Are you on a speakerphone? Well, you know, I, I, no, I'm, uh, I'm on my headset. You know, I feel bad. By it. <laughs> he uh, totally like, forgot about this call. Uh, it's okay. I didn't forget about it. I was, I just didn't have my phone on. I had, I knew, I was in my garage you know, researching uh, right. Bob Newhart. But I, did, I want to say something to you. Sure. You know, out of all the guys, you know, and, and I don't hold a lot of grudges, you know, but there are some things that I just won't do because you know people didn't treat me well. But out of all the radio guys that that I worked with over my career, even when I didn't have a career, you, know, you guys, you and and Spike and, and Joe and the fellow, everybody over there, you know, were uh, were always really supportive of me and always had me in there. And, uh, and and I really appreciate that. You know, I think you do a great show. And uh, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people are sad to see you're gone, but it sounds like you're you're, you're going to be doing something you really want to do. Yeah. Well, I am going to try the whole podcasting thing. I fully expect to fall and fail and not have that many listeners. And I, you know, because I don't know, I I don't know how you attract listeners when you're just posting it on the internet. But, uh, but I have a couple things I want to continue doing. One of them is interviewing and having kinds of discussions you have with smart people. I've always liked finding really like smart scientists and brain people. Uh, and then the other, yeah. the other is supporting music and having musicians on to talk about their craft followed by a live performance. So there's probably different from what you do, but I, but I have a sort of a, I, like, like when I first get in this business, I listened, I watched Johnny Carson to learn a little bit about how to be a host. And now I listen to Mark Marin to go, okay, how do you have a more long form, take time to let something develop, and you don't sit there and worry about ratings uh, and, and, you know, and have it sparkle and become special? Think of it as a first date. A first date? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's funny you would say that. You know why? Because the interviews we do that are on satellite and are limited to six or seven minutes, I've always called it speed dating, that you have to hit on the person yeah. immediately and you have to try and get a let, let them feel you up emotionally. Or well, you well, feel them you up. have to have dinner in a movie. <laughs> yeah, you take a longer time. All right, well, Mark Marin, uh, folks, uh, I'm a huge fan of his, and uh, he is one of the people I wanted to say uh, thank you to while I still had a way to promote him so he might take my call because, you know, no, but well, thank you. I don't I know that he'll be as gracious as we've been when I'm down and out. Nobody's going to be. No. no. You're going to be all alone. <laughs> I will. All right. No, Mark. no, no. I, I will. You guys have been very good to me, and, and, and uh, uh, good luck with everything. Bob. All right. Thank you. Mark Marin, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll talk more. Maybe he won't be able to pick up.